Hi, I'm Mike London. I'm visiting with artists that live and work here in the Miami Valley. Uh, Culture Work supports lots of artists and lots of arts organization. And so this series of interviews is a chance for us to get to meet some of them. And so today I'm speaking to George. This is George Drake Jr. And George, I, I, I can, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I know, I could, I'm going to let you define yourself as an artist. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it going a, a variety of different ways. Uh, so I, I classify myself as an independent radio and audio producer. And so I've, I've dealt with a lot of different forms of radio. I started in college radio. I went into AAA music radio. I then went into sports radio by spending two weeks at Wimbledon when I was getting my master's in radio in London. And then I moved into news radio via a news radio app. Uh, and then I moved on to another one. <laughs> and uh, I've just been freelancing since 2016 after being uh, let go. So th I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of a, I'll just take whatever comes my way type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I produce people's podcasts primarily for them. Uh, they record all the audio. They send me all of the audio that is to be produced. I make an episode, they send it back. I send it back and then they publish it. Uh, that's basically the bread and butter of what I do each day. But uh, I do do my own stuff. Uh, I do stuff for YSO, W-Y-S-O here in Yellow Springs. Mm -hmm. um, every once in a while, I take assignments from them, go out and do stories. I fill in on air uh, for Morning Edition and All Things Considered. And... They, uh, I, I do some podcasting classes with them as well, but then I also do my other, my own other stuff. I just, you know, if I don't have enough plate spinning, I don't know what I'm doing with myself. So I recently completed a five part podcast series called Fifth and Ludlow. And it was only five parts because it only needed to be five parts. You know, podcasts don't, to me, don't really have to continue on forever. A lot of podcasts just keep going and going and going and going, you know, like episode 1000, episode whatever. But I said, you know what? I just want it to be as many parts as it needs to be. I laid it out in an outline and I said, all right, it's five parts. That was that. So that's, that, was, that was a big two-year project and that was released in December of 2019. So when you think about, um, let me ask you this. When you decided, you know, that this is a five-part um, podcast what what was your criteria was just the amount of content or no it was the story okay so i established um i i did about two dozen interviews with various people concerning this story and i i basically just laid out i had a, a list of all of the file names <laughs> that i had titled them it was like yeah. Kathy interview, Frank interview, whatever. And so I knew what they had talked about in those, in those interview, interviews. And so I kind of laid it out and I was like, okay, this will establish this, this will establish this, and then this will be the cliffhanger for this episode. And then that's the end of episode one. And so then I moved on to the next one and the next one and the next one. So by the time I was, all things were said and done, I was like, all right, it's five parts. I was aiming for four, but it turned out to be five. So that's how it got there. Cool. What, so what sparked it? What, 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 I mean, what's it about? The story. Um, yeah. So my, my friend's family, uh, the Hollingsworth family, they, in 2008, were renovating their bathroom of their original 1927 Georgian colonial in Oakwood. And they were out of town at the time, but uh, they had workers coming in and out of the house to continue renovating this bathroom. And they had a huge cast iron bathtub. And it's hard to describe without seeing it. but. Um, it had walls that went all the way to the floor, like, like bathtubs that you see today, just kind of encased in two walls. However, this one had three walls exposed, or three walls, or two walls exposed. So it had a wraparound shower curtain. Okay, yeah. And so underneath was a letter and two envelopes, completely in perfect condition because they were away from sunlight for almost 100 years. Wow. And then they were away from water as well because they were underneath this cast iron bathtub. Um, so they found this letter in 2008 and they just didn't know what to do with it. So they just held on to it and had it framed. I have a mock-up of what the framing looks like. Let me see. Oh, wow. So these are the two envelopes. This is yeah. the letter. And they did find some newspaper articles as well, uh, just kind of wrapped around the pipe, which they, um, assumed was insulation, uh, 
I, I'm not sure how good <laughs> one strip of newspaper really does. <laughs> um, but they said, you know, that was part of a larger sheet. They just established, oh, this is a good one. Let's save this article. Let's save this article. Um, and so they, they had it framed like that. And it sat there for however long. And then I think it was like 2014 or so we were visiting. We weren't living in Dayton at the time. We were living in Chicago, my wife and I. And their daughter, Tori, my, my wife, Ruth's best friend, brought it out. She said, have you ever seen this letter? And Ruth hadn't even seen it. And so she brought the whole frame that looked like that out to us. And I read the letter and I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> this has to be looked into. And so then we moved to Dayton. And then in May of 2017, I just texted Tori saying, we need to do this. I need to interview you or else we're never going to get it done. And so I did interviews with her family. And then I, it got to the point where I was like, you know what, I, I'm going to have to start paying for things. <laughs> and I, was, I, I, I wasn't planning on making money on this. Um, it was just kind of a passion project. And so I reached out. I, I got a grant through Culture Works in the Montgomery Arts and Cultural District. And uh, they helped pay for the stuff I, I was trying to not pay for. <laughs> so it was great. It really worked out. But the, it's, it's crazy. Here, I'll, I'll show you some more stuff. Yeah. This is a, this is a blow up of the letter. Um, it's smaller. It was, this is probably the original size right here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, I'll read it to you. I'll give you a, a preview of the podcast, Michael. Yeah, Just yeah, 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 do. So at the top, it says Dayton, Ohio, July, Tuesday, 2020. So July 20th, 1920. 1920. 1920. Wow, it was it it was a hundred years ago. Yeah, I know this this year we're like talking about what we can do on July twentieth. <laughs> wow! All right, so it says, "Friend Rose, I got your letter and I am well, and I hope this will please you, Rose. I will meet you at the corner of Fifth and Ludlow at Jenkins Drugstore at seven thirty, and you and I will go out to the home and go someplace to ourselves and talk the matter over, hoping you will be all okay when we meet. If you are willing to do this." and keep it to yourself, Will. Wow. So it was very odd, cryptic, bizarre. And so that's, that's the only reason they held onto it. It could have just been a piece of trash that they threw away, but because sure. of the contents, they decided not to. Um, and then it came with letters or envelopes that came with the letter. Um, this one actually went along with the letter because the handwriting is in pencil, it's the same. Uh, and that's addressed to a Mrs. Rose O'Connor Krug's Bakery at the corner of Joe and Warren Street in care of Oscar Gilbert City. And by city, they just mean Dayton. You could address it that way locally. Yeah, you could have. But, but, but it, was at the, it was addressed to her at the bakery. Yes, yes. Interesting. So kind of in care of a third party. Yeah. Uh, and that was postmarked July 20th, same, 10 a.m. Uh, from Dayton, Ohio. So, but at, at the top in the corner, it says, opened by mistake, but not read J.T. Schaefer. So somebody had opened this, <laughs> maybe didn't read it. <laughs> and put it back. Yeah, then, I didn't then, read it. I didn't see a thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the next one is uh, another envelope. This one is to a Mr. Jim O'Connor. And the, it, the handwriting is very faint on it. Yeah. Uh, and it says, care, mail room, care of mail room, Union Depot, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and this one is postmarked from Zanesville almost a year later, September 7th, 1921. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. But, so, they both, but both were together. They were both together. That one didn't have a, a letter with it. So the working theory, and um, this, is, this is giving a little bit of the podcast away, but not too much, um, is that someone, a year after the original letter to, from Will to Rose was sent, yeah. said, you know what? Rose's husband, Jim, needs to see this. So they put it, envelope and all, into an envelope and sent it to Jim. So over the course of the five parts, you know, we talk to a Dayton historian, a few Dayton historians. We get a genealogist, an amateur genealogist on board. We kind of just paint the picture of Dayton in 1920, in the early, in, well, really in the early 1900s, because they were living throughout that time. And what a great time to be alive. I mean, yeah. it was just innovation city and they saw it and it's just it's so great to be a part of that so it's just really fun to to look into the history of Dayton and um kind of track down what that letter could be about so 
so, so tell me this. So for anybody listening, um, some of us know about podcasts and some of us don't. So pretend like you're talking to somebody who really doesn't know anything about podcasts. Sure. What are the, what are the options for them to be able to one, get to it and to hear this series? So there are a few different ways. Um, one, maybe the easiest way is fifth and Ludlow podcast.com. Okay. Uh, there I have it. all the parts are there. You can listen in order one to five. Um, and there's also all of the documentation and pictures and research that went along with each part. So and if so, I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm a person who's most comfortable with a computer, that's a great way for me that's to do a great it. Way. Yeah. Okay. The next part. Yeah. Is uh, via your phone. So if you have an iPhone um, or any, uh, any phone, they usually come with like a podcasts app. Uh, okay. Even like an Android phone. So yeah. in, in, the, uh, in an iPhone, the icon looks like this purple one right here. Yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. With a little guy with the halos around his head. So you click on that and it brings up um, just kind of a, a way for you to search uh, in like the... So if you, and you, would you just type in Fifth and Ludlow? You just type in Fifth and Ludlow and it'll show up just like this it's cool. all there and you can um subscribe to it um but again it's only five parts so <laughs> it'd be nice sure. if you subscribe uh if there's a part six you'll be notified <laughs> yeah and uh you can just click on one and there's kind of a little episode notes of what okay. the episode's about and cool you can rate and review the show there too that really helps it uh boost up in the rankings and yeah yeah so, so just look for there because there are a variety of different. Um, what is the one I remember? I see a lot. Stitcher. Stitcher. It um it's on Spotify. Okay. Um, it's not on Stitcher. Uh, I don't think it's on TuneIn. Uh, TuneIn is a, yes. is a radio app. It's on there as well. So there are a few different places. But yeah, iTunes, the Google Podcasts, uh, would like it. Well, there's Apple Podcasts now. They kind of ditched iTunes for podcasts. Sure. Uh, Google Podcasts and then TuneIn and Spotify. And then you know, for so many people, George, this whole this um, it's really interesting. These past five, ten years of just the creation of podcasts, it's a whole new world. Um, it is, yeah. You know, and for for many of us, many of us have have been listening for a long time for to a variety of different. I have a friend of mm -hmm. mine. Um, she just doesn't, I don't think she drives anywhere. Um, she, she, she also works for the county, but I don't think she drives anywhere where she doesn't have, uh, actually she has it on her phone. She has a podcast yeah. ready to go on her phone, transmitting to the speaker, you know, and the yeah. radio in the car that she listens to uh, with mm -hmm. her Bluetooth. Um, she always has it, always something. I don't think she listens to anything else. Um, where other people that I've talked to, um, and I've, I've mentioned Fifth and Ludlow, I've mentioned some others, and I'll mention it to them, and they'll go, and, you know, they look sort of look like that, you know, that radio dog with just the, the old radio, you know, the, <laughs> from RCA, uh -huh. like, the, what are you talking about? It really yeah. is, it really is new. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it's been around for almost 20 years. I think it's like 2006 yeah. is when it started. But it is new in the sense that people are really just now kind of getting on board. Um, yeah. What's interesting is podcasting for me is kind of, it, it's a tough, it's a tough racket because I'm asking people to pay me to make something for them that they are going to give away for free. Hmm. So it's, it's kind of a tough balance in that regard. Um, and I mean, I spent over easily over 300 hours on the five episodes of Fifth and Ludlow. Uh, sure. It's less, it's less than two hours long total. And uh, I, I didn't make a single cent off of it. And I don't really plan to. I mean, I'm, that's not my intent. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it is it is tough. It's, it's interesting that, you know, people consume, you know, all these podcasts. And I, I'm not sure. The, well, let me put it this way. When I, when I put my application in for the Culture Works grant, mm -hmm. I was worried that they would think it was too journalistic and not artistic. Sure. Because 
to some degree it is. I mean, I'm not, argue, I'm not arguing that. Um, so when I, when I did the application, I really, you know, amped up the art side of it because there is an art to audio producing and oh, yeah. storytelling and writing and crafting a narrative and using music subtly and sound. And, you know, there's, there is an art to it. Um, but people don't really recognize that because it's not something they like see or watch someone make. They can't touch it. They can't yeah. feel it. They can't smell it. It's just, it's just there. You know, it's not like Michelangelo's David, not, not Leonardo da Vinci, who did that? Can't remember. Um, you know, walking around it. Yeah, you, know, you can't, yes, you can't yes. walk around a podcast. Right. And so it's just, it's just there. Um, I, I, so what, all right, you work on other podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, do you work on a wide range of them? I mean, are some of them commercial in other words, done for businesses, and some of them are artistic? Right. No, I, no. That's the other part of podcasting that's really changed, I would say, in the last, like, three to five years. Is How that, so? Um, podcasting has become very marketing-driven. So to, for a business, they yeah. see podcasting as a way to advertise. Okay. Without, without actually paying, you know, to, for a commercial spot or something. You know, they make content, they put it out there, and they, they don't really veil it as, you know, oh, this is like a show that you should listen to. Sure. But it is kind of like, hey, this is a show you should listen to by, you know, XYZ company that you've probably heard of a bunch, you know? And yeah. so it is, a, it is a way to advertise. It's a bit more subtle, but at the same time, it's kind of blatantly in your face. So, it, it, yeah, that's the thing is that, people have started to see podcasting as a marketing avenue instead of just radio in the typical sense of, you know, journalism and stuff like that. When you think about, um, for yourself as a podcast producer, when you think about something, what excites you? What is it? I mean, I can see the mystery of the letter, why it piqued your interest. What is it that, what is it that piques your interest in, the, in a story that you go, you know what? this would make a good podcast. In other words, this is the right medium for this hmm. piece of uh, art or store or whatever. What is it that... Well, I mean, the, the letter, <laughs> it's kind of a weird, a weird balance because I was like, this is a great... There's obviously a story here. It's a mystery element. But at the same time, it's very visual. Oh, you yeah. know, this, there's this letter that they can't see, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I really had to go above and beyond in the writing and try to really flesh it out. I, I describe the elements of the paper and the discoloring and the handwriting and everything to try and give you that picture. Um, and that's why I have such a heavy um, online presence with the, with the pictures, because I want you to be able to go in there and see everything and almost go through the files like I did just to, you know, yeah. see it all. Um, but in terms of a story, I mean, it's tough because a good story doesn't really have to have so many parts. A good story can just be as simple as, you know, a, kind of a one, two, three punch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I produce podcasts mainly for people and businesses that want to market themselves. And they, they have some stories with, and most all, all of them are just interview based. So it's just two people talking. Um, but, you know, in there, there's, you know, three minute stories that I find just so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole thing is 40 minutes long, but that three minutes really stands out to me because it's just a fun little story. So it doesn't have to be this big, huge, long-winded thing like, like Serial, for instance, that is yeah. like the pinnacle of, of, you know, episodic storytelling in terms of radio. But it, it, you know, it can be small. And that, that's why I like Fifth and Love, though. I mean, the, the longest episode, I think, is like 20... 25 minutes maybe and the shortest minute the shortest one is 18 so, so if just, you had yeah if if assume for a moment that you've got because i know you've done workshops but assume for a moment that there's an there's so, there's somebody watching who says you know i've always thought about doing a podcast if you had three things to tell them hmm. three pieces of advice what are the three pieces of advice you'd give somebody who was new to podcasting um, I would say start with what you have, first of all. And I learned that in my 
graduate program. We did what we called digi days, which were digital days, and we just used our phones. And that was that was our recording kit. That was our camera. That was our video camera. It was everything. And so just use what you have. You have a phone, and there's a voice memos app that is surprisingly good. Uh, you know, you, there, you have to kind of play around with it to make sure you know if if you're recording your own track to hold it right. But if you're doing an interview, I mean, it's a fine it, fine thing to act as a microphone. Just be, for, be sure you're talking into the bottom of it because that's where the, the microphone is. So start with what you have. Don't invest in big, crazy microphones like this one or anything <laughs> yet. Just, just start with what you have and put it out there. Um, second, there doesn't necessarily need to be a story, but you know, if you just want to talk to people, if you want to talk to your friends, if you want to talk to people in the community, just learn about what they do, they actually turn out to be a bit of a story. So you don't have to, you know, have an inkling like, oh, I'm going to look into this. Just, you know, my, my, one of my good friends put it this way. He said, stories are like nesting dolls. Like there's always one inside of another. And so just talk to someone and sure enough, then there's going to be another story inside of another story inside of another story. So yeah. find somebody to talk to. Doesn't matter who it is. A lot of people totally fine. A lot of people just bank on their grandparents. They're like, oh, my grandparents have good stories. They do. Absolutely. Um, so talk to your grandparents. I never did that. Um, I, I really wasn't in like this mindset when my grandparents were still alive. But, uh, you know, it would have been fun to do that. Uh, so use what you have. Talk to anybody and just be fearless. Just put it out there. Um, there are different ways to put it out there. Um, SoundCloud is free to a point. Uh, it's mainly for music, though, so don't think that there's like a huge podcast platform there because it's kind of not. Um, what I use for Fifth and Ludlow in terms of distribution is called Anchor. It can be found at anchor.fm, and that is 100% free, and it will do all of the legwork for you in terms of getting you on iTunes and Spotify and this and that. However, um, it does. there are some caveats in terms of, you know, it will brand it It'll say that they are the owner, even though they're not. And they might put their, you can, they can have their logo on your logo, but you can uncheck that. It, whatever, it's fine. They're owned by Spotify. It's legit, but just know that there are some caveats. So yeah, use what you have. Talk to whoever you want and be fearless. Who do you, are, well, let me ask it this way. Are there podcasts that you subscribe to that you just are really impressed with? You know, it's tough because uh, I, when I lived in Chicago, I had a commute. Um, so I would listen to podcasts there. Yeah. I don't have a commute to my office. Yes. <laughs> my bedroom is, see that lamp? It's yeah, behind, exactly. It's behind that lamp. So this is my <laughs> commute. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I don't really listen to, um, I, I don't really like just consume podcasts as much as I used to, especially because... Sure. All I do is produce other people's podcasts. So I'm, yeah. I'm constantly listening to things. And by the end of the day, I'm just burnt out. Yeah, I mean. Um, but if, if people want, just kind of, uh, you know, get, get into the water, figure out, you know, what podcasting is all about. You, I mean, you can start big. Uh, you know, there's This American Life, a show that's been around for almost 20 years. It yeah. started on the radio in Chicago. They moved into podcasting. They've only gotten bigger. Uh, great storytelling, always an hour long. Um, Radio Lab is a huge one out of um, WNYC in New York. They are changing things up because one of their hosts is leaving um, or has already left. So I'm not sure what their plan is for that. But they do really, really in-depth, great sound design storytelling, usually with a scientific bent. Um, but I don't, they, they have a lot of episodes, but they put so much work into each episode that they don't release like every week. They, they only release a handful of episodes every year. So um, keep that in mind. But then in terms of smaller shows, um, one by a guy named Jeff Emptman out of uh, the West Coast. His show is called Here Be Monsters. Uh, it's a show about the unknown, as he says it is. And then uh, another great show that is interview-based. I, I, I'm not too keen on interview shows because I, you know, it's just a lot of talking for 40 minutes. But um, one, as long as the interviewer is good, then it's more palatable. Um, so a smaller one that has a really great interview interviewer is called Art versus Commerce. 
And so he talks to everybody from, you know, people who work in film or galleries and stuff. And then he kind of talks about more of a commerce aspect as well. Cool. So there are four to start with, but you start with whatever. I mean, just look for stuff that interests you. I mean, you can literally in the podcast app, search whatever word you want and stuff will come up. So you're, you're here in Dayton. Hmm. And uh, yeah, you and Ruth, I know you're here in Dayton and you have, congratulations, by the way, I know you have a new production. <laughs> yes, yes. The new production is uh, eight weeks old today. Oh, wow. His name is Wesley Dean. He's very cute. That's the best. Yeah. That's just the best. <laughs> um, so I'm just, I, I really just have one other thing I want to bug you about. And that, what does it mean to work in in Dayton, in the Miami Valley, in this community? You know, I, so we moved here in the month after we got married. It was mm -hmm. August, 2016. And we moved here because um, Ruth's dad was, he, he had ALS. He passed away two years after we moved here. Um, and it was a great, you know, very important two years to be here for it yeah. um, and help because I mean, that is, that is a disease where you just need help. So we moved here for that. And I, I was worried that, you know, I was, I, I grew up in Chicago. I, I mean, I went to school in Bloomington, Indiana, so that means nothing, but then I went to London, you know, and so I'm, I kind of have a heart for a bigger city. And so when we decided to move here, I was worried that I wouldn't like it. Uh, but I was crazy wrong. I mean, I love this city. I love the history it has. I mean, Chicago and London have great histories as well. But yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like here, it's just much more accessible to, to learn about. You know, because, I mean, it seems silly, but you don't have to, like, you know, hang out in traffic for 40 minutes. You don't have to get on three tube lines. You know, you can just take a drive down and there, find a parking space. You know, it's just you can go places and learn about this city, unlike any other city I've tried to learn about. So I love it for that reason. But then, I mean, just like the people are just so genuine and kind and wonderful. And they're proud of this city. You know, I, I, you know I'm not saying Chicagoans aren't proud. I'm not saying London, Londoners aren't proud. But, you know, when you're walking down the street, everybody's just in their own world. And here it's, you know, they're together. And so I just love that aspect. And the art is so strong. It's way stronger than I, any other art I've experienced in other cities. So I'm just proud to be a part of it. Um, I'm, you know, I've only been here for going on, I guess, four years now, but I'm just totally, totally invested. Well, I, I, it's been great to meet you. Um, and, and I'm glad you're here. Um, oh, thank you. And I'm glad. I'm I'm really glad also for um, for others that are watching to be able to to meet you and to learn about another art and another art form actually that mm -hmm. they may not know much about uh, or have heard a little bit about. Um, so I I really thank you for this. The oh, um, thank you. The Culture Works supports. Uh, they supported you and your project. They support a lot of arts organizations and a lot of individual artists. Um, the assets. Uh, that we have in this community and the arts are, are, are just incredibly strong. Um, we're, in a, we're in a really lucky place. This is a difficult time though. Mm -hmm. And so part of the reason that I'm also doing this interviews, uh, this series of interviews, is to be able to encourage anybody who's watching to support Culture Works, to be a part of it. Right now, almost everywhere, some aspect of the arts, whether it's dance, music, visual arts, whatever, part of it is like the rest of the community is shut down. And mm -hmm. many of our arts organizations, um, they don't have massive budgets. And uh, so the support in order to keep this, this incredible and vital community that we have in the arts is really important. So one of the reasons I'm doing this also is to, to, to say to anyone who's out there watching, if you're interested in the arts, if you're interested in, in the artists that you're meeting through this series of interviews, uh, support Culture Works. Uh, become a member of Culture Works. There's lots of benefits for you and lots of benefits for your family. Buy one, get one free tickets all year long. You can't beat it with a stick. Um, so, and if you want to know about Culture Works, 
go to the website cultureworks.org. If you go to the website cultureworks.org, you'll find out about all of those things. George, thank you so much. It's good to see you again. I hope the next time um, we don't have this in between. We've now had this a few times in our visits and other work. Um, and so it's good to see you. And, and, and I want to see the baby because I haven't had any baby time. Yes. Um, but that's, I know that's going to have to wait. I do appreciate your time today, though. Of course. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I appreciate it. We'll see you later. All right. Bye. Thanks.